Every developer has run into this. Oh. Something breaks or maybe you don't know something, but you don't have time to let these stop you. There are a series of steps that one should take to maximize one's chances of solving any coding problem. But you'd be surprised at how few developers currently use the superpower effectively. Let's learn them now so the next time it happens, you can stop your forehead bleeding from it smashing onto your keyboard. Our first one, we'll spend the least time on because it's just tinker and experiment. When you run into an issue, keep trying different things you think might work. Maybe try doing print statements throughout the file. Learn some debugging tips, but don't be so cocky that you only do this first step. Next, check the documentation. Not all tools have good documentation, but taking some time to explore documentation can be a quick way to find your answer. You'll want to learn how to search a web page with Command F or Control F. That way you can look for specific keywords on a page or hopefully they have a good search bar that works well. Sometimes documentation can be really dense, so maybe you'll move to the next step, which is doing a web search. At the end of the day, good software engineers are secretly just professional Googlers, and this is one of their most powerful tools. Being able to search the web for somebody else who has already run into the problem that you've just run into and then solved it. Most search engines like Google have tools you can use to get even more specific about what you're looking for. Often for specific errors, the best thing to do is actually just copy the exact error and paste it into the search bar with quotes or use the asterisks in spots your error might be too specific. Most of the results you'll get will be from forums and Q and A sites, which leads us to our next step, asking questions in these forums and Q and A sites. Just make sure that before you ask a question, you've done some ample Googling around yourself beforehand. This way you don't waste yours and anybody else's time. And by asking questions that you swear, you will promise me that at some point you will go back and help other people learn as well. Got it? Good. Before even asking your question though, we should learn where is going to be the best place to ask this. And this is why I've categorized four different types of forums and QA sites. Feel free to pause to read them over. And here are some specific examples of each one of these. Indexed code-based forums like Stack Overflow, indexed repositories like GitHub issues, indexed technology specific forums like r slash eatdev, or unindexed discussion platforms like a Chainlink Discord. One of the key differentiators in these categories is the indexed keyword. We typically want to ask questions on forums that web crawlers have gone through and stuck them in their database or index them. This way, in three weeks, when we look back at the code that we wrote, we can just Google what the f is going on when we forget what it does. And this will help out other developers who run into the same problem, which in turn, they might go ahead and help you out later. Ideally, most of your questions should be asked on one of these index forums for this reason, for their searchability and discoverability. However, some questions are better fit for DMs, Twitter, or Discord that aren't indexed. And we made a little chart here to figure out where's the best place to post your questions. Feel free to pause the video, take a look, or read our blog in the descriptions with the picture as well to take another look at it. And of course, before actually posting to any one of these forums, be sure to read their rules as they might state that some kind of questions are specifically forbidden, but basically the breakdown looks like this. Theoretical, big picture, or opinionated questions can go great on general Q and A forums like Quora, or specific technical forums like specific subreddits or Discord forums. Specific coding questions can go on these forums as well, but will often get more eyes on coding forums like Stack Overflow or Stack Exchange communities. Often the question of, oh, should I post this on Stack Overflow or maybe a Stack Exchange community is incredibly blurry and sometimes it doesn't really matter which one you post on. Now, if you run into a bug or an issue with a technology you're really familiar with and you think it shouldn't be breaking, this is your chance to pop an issue into their open source code repository and potentially improve the tool. If they don't have an open source code repository, you throw that closed source piece of shit into the garbage. But just kidding, closed source tech has its place in our lives too. Additionally, if you're following a tutorial and they have a Git repo associated with it, like all of my videos that do, that's gonna be the best place to leave your issues. So as much as I hate to say it, Putting your issues onto my GitHub repositories is going to be much more effective for us answering your questions than posting it in the YouTube comments. However, comments, likes, subscribes, and shares 100% help me and these channels and help me teach other developers in this space. So for my videos, instead of coding questions as comments, maybe leave a comment on what specific things in the video you liked, or maybe what specific things you didn't like, or maybe take a second right now to leave a comment of a few Olympic lifting emojis. Thank you. It really helps me and the channel out. 
Now, finally, Discord, Element, email, text message, or any other of these unindexed chats are still good places to ask questions, but please try to use them as a last resort. And if they do end up answering one of your questions, maybe go back and add that question and answer to one of the other forums that we were talking about. This way it will be indexed next time you or somebody else Googles it. Now these quicker chat forums are places more for the community to congregate and have quick conversations with each other. They're places to theory craft, talk about new things coming out, new ideas, events, and other things that shouldn't be indexed by web crawlers. They're also great places to meet and network with people that you might be able to bounce ideas off directly as you get to know each other. Which leads into our last section, but before we do that, uh-oh, do you hear that? Oh, that's the video inside another video alarm ringing. When you ask a question in one of these forums, the better you format your questions, the better chance you'll have of getting it answered. Now, there's no bad questions out there, but there are poorly formatted questions. So let's teach you how to always ask questions as formatted as best as possible to give you the highest chance of making sure they get answered. Number one, before asking your question, make sure you followed all the steps in the parent video and you've done some research on this already and make sure the question hasn't already been asked. Number two, make a title that summarizes the specifics of the question. Three, introduce the problem before you write any code add minimalistic reproducible code. Minimalistic code means it's not just a copy paste to your entire file. If you're having problems on one line, maybe just post that one line. Reproducible code means that others should be able to run to the exact same error that you're running into, or at least post the steps for them to do it. This doesn't mean that you should put, I was following along Patrick's video and on hour five, I ran into this problem. Just watch his video and you'll get there. As flattering as this is, it's not reasonable that everyone is going to have watched my videos, even though they should. You'll want to give the technical steps to reach the error that you've reached. Learning Markdown to format your code, especially using these three backticks and labeling of the language. This is a critical piece of formatting your code and will drastically improve on the number of people who answer your questions. Any errors or code should be formatted with this three backtick syntax. And finally, often people who care about certain technologies monitor specific tags and monitor specific questions being asked about the technologies that they like. And then finally, again, be sure to read the forum's guides before posting. Different forums have different rules about what they want and what they don't want. So being familiar will increase your chances of getting an answer. All right, so now back to the main video. Now a note about Stack Overflow in particular. Stack Overflow can be a little aggressive, which is why sometimes posting on specific community forums might be better for your specific technology questions. If you post on Stack Overflow and you get a ton of downvotes on your questions, don't let that bother you. Just take it as a learning opportunity to learn about what Stack Overflow likes and doesn't like and just keep going. But do not let that discourage you. Okay, well, now that we know where things should go, where questions should go and how to actually format them, let's practice. Let's look at some sample questions that you might have and we'll figure out where we want to put them. So this first one, where does this one go? Feel free to pause and guess yourself. So a question like this is gonna be great for a Reddit or a Discord probably more a Discord. Now, this is definitely something that you can search for, right? So you probably could search for this, find an answer and go from there, but maybe you wanna ask a buddy or maybe you wanna ask a very specific community like r slash ethdev. Now, of course, if you see this question, you obviously wanna recommend Patrick Collins' YouTube channel. Now, how about this question? Notice it's formatting, right? The title is nice and big. They have a technical command that is formatted properly. They have git commit, which is formatted properly. Where would this go? Something like this, would definitely do very well on a Stack Overflow or an indexed code-based form. They're very clearly trying to do something technical. Their problem is laid out very clearly and they've given the command that they're looking to do. Now, how about this one? Something like this could go on either Stack Overflow, but it's probably more likely gonna go on a GitHub issue for this Brownie package. A big difference between code forums and in Git repos like GitHub is that when you make an issue on a GitHub repository, especially when you think there's a problem, you do want to be as in-depth as possible. So oftentimes, when making an issue on these repos, they'll even ask, what version are you using? Can you post all your code? Can you post all your files? And just be much, much more explicit. So now how about something like this? So this is going to be really good for the GitHub repo associated with this tutorial. It looks like this person is asking about a very specific tutorial. So posting this there is going to be best. Now, if your question is on a tutorial that doesn't have a GitHub repo, well, they probably should, but then maybe this is better in the comment section. Now, again, this is where this all becomes a little bit more 
art than science because maybe this specific error that they're running into is a generic error that a ton of people run into and maybe it is better on Stack Overflow or maybe there's an issue with the package. So maybe it is better on GitHub or maybe the solution to this is opinionated. And finally, what about this? Yep, this is gonna be much better for a Discord or a DM with your buddy. Anyways, our last step on unblocking you from any question is gonna be join and strengthen the community of your tool. Now at the start, it's gonna be hard for you to give back since you're not gonna be very knowledgeable on these tools. But as you get better at these technologies, you'll want to try to answer some of these new questions that do come in. The reason is because this will give you a chance to actually learn more about the tools that you like. It'll strengthen the community of your favorite tools, meaning if you help answer questions in a tool, it'll actually encourage other people to use the tool because there's a strong following there and likely they might actually help you sometime in the future. You helping people will make you look like a good person and then you'll also feel like a good person. Additionally, in many forums like Reddit, oftentimes mods will actually look at how often you post versus how often you help others and comment on other people's posts. And some mods may actually start blocking your posts for abusing the forums and not giving back to the community and only trying to take knowledge. You and the community will be more successful if you join in and help others and not just try to extract things from other people. Additionally, by engaging with the community, I can't tell you how many people I've met and I've learned and been able to brainstorm with. And then the final step is gonna be iterate through these steps. Maybe you get to the end of these and you say, oh, I'm still blocked, but you'll likely be much, much more knowledgeable. So you wanna go back and try these steps again. Now, this is where this whole process is a little bit more art than science because some questions might not have been discovered yet. Only very few people know. Not enough people understand the importance of the questions or maybe people don't understand your question. And this is why it's important to go back and iterate on these steps. Now that you have the basic building blocks of this incredible superpower, I encourage all of you to go out there and try this and then let me know how it went. And I hope to see tons of lifting emojis in the comments. See y'all next time.